Black people or the black community is so optional, like, like situational when it comes to their anger. Because here you have people going outraged about Brianna, um, about her death. And then you have a black woman that has been shot in plain sight by a black man. Two of them being famous and no one is really making a big to do about it. And then the fact that this man is not in jail, what it says is that not only do black lives don't matter, but black females don't matter. optimistic I woke up very very grateful because I know things could be so much worse not that anything's bad but you know um make sure you guys can hear me you guys can hear me right good morning Jasmine give me a thumbs up or something if you can hear me you know how I always be having problems with <laughs> the sound. Okay, great. Honey, let me tell you something. I woke up this morning. I'm actually very surprised that I woke up early this morning because I was out late working my job for Instacart doing a couple of deliveries. But I woke up to a very nice surprise. Um, thank you. These are my fox shades. I woke up, I woke up to a very nice surprise. And, hey there. I had to listen to it the first time when I was in my car doing my deliveries. And then I had to come back home and listen to it again. Honey, look. Ciao. Let's just say this. Tory Lane, in regards to, you know, the Meg Thee Stallion shootout and everything like that, he responded to Meg Thee Stallion and um, he dropped some tea, honey. Now, although some people are going to disagree with the way he responded, he is capitalizing off of it by releasing an album. I, for one, even though it's very shady, like what he's capitalizing off of, capitalizing off of um, the pain of a black woman, a very famous black woman, <laughs> um, I must commend his artistry. And everybody knows how I feel about Megan Thee Stallion. That's my bitch. Everybody knows how, or should know about, or should know about how this time, how I feel about Tory Lane. Okay, I'm really upset because, like, I think, I think what Tori needs to understand is that there's a thing called financial literacy, and what you're doing, what you're doing when you make statements like that, you're teaching financial illiteracy to a generation of men, little boys, teaching a generation of fuck boys. Because, you know, now now you are the leader of the fuckboys. You are, you are fuckboy number one. And even though I do not agree with his misogynistic ways, I have all his albums. He's a great artist. He's a great artist. Um, so I'm going to call a spade like a spade. I started listening to this album because, like, First of all, off of a fan. But you know when you listen to something and you kind of go into it not wanting to like it? And I kid you not, this is not me clout chasing. This is not me hating. Honey, it's very hypnotizing because it's a fucking masterpiece. I, I said it. And... I'm very conflicted because 
I feel this is the same thing that R. Kelly, Michael Jackson, you know, everyone that has ever been accused of being, you know, on the other side of the spectrum when it comes to morality. And especially like since this is a very sensitive subject because of the fact that um, listening to his album, he dropped some tea. And I must say, I'm confused now. I'm really confused. I don't know who to believe. Um, I know that there's some tea. There's still some tea that people are not putting on to. And, you know, and the reason I feel like this is such an important topic as the black community is because we're kind of like, damn if we do and damn if we don't. This is like, I went into this like saying to myself that black people or the black community is so like optional, like, like situational when it comes to their their anger. Will you ignorant niggas please shut the hell up? <laughs> Is this it? This is what I got all those ass whoopings for. I had a dream once. It was a dream that little black boys and little black girls would drink from the river of prosperity, freed from the thirst of oppression. But lo and behold, some four decades later, what have I found but a bunch of trifling Shiftless, good for nothing niggas. Because here you have people really going outraged about Brianna, and then you have a black woman that has been shot in plain sight by a black man, two of them being famous, and no one is really making a big to do about it. I mean, if anyone, if anything, people are making jokes about it. And then the fact that this man is not in jail, what it says is that not only do black lives don't matter, but black females don't matter, especially if the aggressor is a black man. And I think the only thing I can say, the critique I can say about this album is that um, it's a masterpiece, but I didn't hear any accountability from his part. You know, I, I saw him pointing the finger, but I did not hear, like, any accountability. And it just kind of makes me think there may be a third party involved in this that somebody is protecting. Oh. It is like an ongoing drama, y'all. <laughs> um... And I'm, I'm really invested into this because of the fact that, you know, I feel that it represents something so much bigger because whether people want to look at it or not, this is how it looks. It looks like we as Americans can let this nigga, people tend to forget that Tory is not American. We can let this nigga, we can let anyone come in from another country, beat on our black women, you know, assault our black women, and live scot-free. That's what it's saying. Now, if there's something more to the story, if there's a third person, which I think that there is, honey, there needs to, that person needs to be known, honey, because I'm child. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready for them to give up the goods. And I don't know too much you guys know. I really thought about this really hard. I. I like I said, I heard that album like two times. Um, it is, child, he reads, but he reads in a very artistic way. Like he called Kalani out. He dissed um, Chance the Rapper, um, just like, and I think what makes it so sad is saying that you can assault a black female make some really great artistry, seduce us with your art, and everything will be okay. Hey, it's worked for R. Kelly. I'm gonna read this. <laughs> I love this. Thank you, Aaron. I like this blonde too. 
you know, I got her for $20, honey, right off of Offer Up. Offer Up is where I get all of my gilders from now. And um, I don't know if some of you girls are very well aware of like the beauty supply stores, but the, the beauty supply stores out here in LA, they are trying it, trying it. And what I mean by that is that this same, this same unit was in this place called Wild Beauty. I'm gonna call them out. And Wild Beauty, I'd say they probably have about five more years before they're gonna be out of business because this hair, this, this synthetic human blend in Wild Beauty was $89. And you know me, I'm like, that's $89. Why is that so expensive? High quality home and half. That's what the woman says. Um, this is the same beauty supply store that I've been kicked out of because what I would do, I would just like blatantly go in the store, take a picture of the wig that they had, and then I would go on Glamstress or HairSisters.com and I would get the shit like half price. Half, actually, half the time. Lesser than half price. So, um, yeah. Miss Dane has all those wigs just jacked up and then she had the nerve to have a 50% off sale. And the 50% off, they think they're so fucking slick. 50% off. And then I go in there the next week and it's like the same wig. Okay, now it's $70. And you see a price tag and they have like a red marker through it. I think it was like 134 before and now we've marked it down and it's 70. Miss Thing, you're so tired for that. People are gonna start discovering these like little wig shops that are online. And honey, all I'm gonna say, honey, they need to get it together. Are they gonna be left alone and out of business? Because people are getting tired of paying all this goddamn money for it. So she's good and she's She's free flowing now because this is like my second day having her. But honey, by the end of the month, I bet you you won't be able to run a, um, a brush through here. For Troy to make a mess. Troy to make a mess. It is tired. It is tired, but you know what? I'm gonna say that I commend him because it's fucked up. But in a way, He's taking advantage of a broken community because this is the same community that wants to be up raw about Brianna, but then there's a black woman that's been that assaulted in plain daylight. And not just any black female, you know, an A-list rapper, and everyone wants to make a joke out of it. It's oh, 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 yes. This tea here, honey. Honey, he actually said on one of his songs, he alluded to the fact that Megan and her girlfriend, the girl, the other girl that was there, that they had a thing going on with him. And that's how this whole rah-rah started. And I can tell you this, that sounds very familiar because we know on our community how we have community trade, honey. He's been with this girl, he's been with that girl. You mean, you know, child, he's all over the Thought Network. And see, I'm gonna say this too. Usually, that happens with guys that have big dick energy, okay? And I'm gonna say, I, I'm i pretty sure Tory Lanez has big dick energy. I mean, he has to, has to. I mean, cause like, it has to be way more than just your money that, that you're getting Girls like Jocelyn Hernandez and you know Megan Thee Stallion, Kylie Jenner. Mm -hmm. You know he has a, he has a nice mouth. I mm -hmm. bet you, as far as like a good a good talk game, and he has big dick energy. And I'm telling you, I'm gonna warn you, girls. For some of you young girls, when you get with a guy that has big dick energy and his swag, and he's an, an artist, artist oh, bitch, bitch, you're, you're in, in trouble. trouble. Because I'm telling you, they're like emotional con artists and that's why it's so I don't know where I stand with this because like 
this masterpiece that he just released and capitalizing off of the trauma of a, of, a, of a black female, I feel so guilty because of the fact that it's good. You know, I really wanted to do this live and, you know, read the fuck out of him and trash it, but I gotta call a spade a spade. And I'm gonna say that I think this is, I, honey, if anybody over there at Rock Nation is watching this, which I doubt they are, child, y'all need to pull a Beyonce and release that Meg album ASAP. Take that light away. Take that shine away from him. Because, honey, 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 He's been with a lot of women in the industry, but the fact of the matter is, is that he's been with top notch women in the industry. That he hasn't been in the game that long to be able to get a lot of these top notch women that he has been able to finesse. And especially being, having the misogynistic attitude that he has. So it has to be big dick energy that's the only thing that i can i can factor because like that's the only thing that can make the girls you know bypass and look at other things but anyways he alluded to the fact that i guess some tea may have gone down where megan and her her good girlfriend they were both having tori and she he told her oh you should have told him about us girl it's messy messy and it just reminds me of like <laughs> when you have, when you're telling your girl about the nigga that you're fucking with, that he got some good dick. And basically, and I tell y'all girls before, honey, do not tell no nigga, do not tell no bitch about a nigga with a, some good dick unless you're prepared to share it. Situation. I understand that I can be a little thoughtish sometimes as far as like, you know, sleeping with guys that you know, that you may have had, you know, that time that, you know, I went through your phone when you was yeah. asleep. <laughs> yeah, and that was, but I yeah. apologize for that. Did I was you ever go through my phone? And got no, no, I never did that. Well, I, this is why you can't tell another girl that you got some good good, because they might try to go on your phone and think that they can hit the boy up too. I was just, he liked me, and I thought he was handsome, and then she goes and has him. <laughs> And then later on tells me, like, that's crazy. There's so many guys in this universe. But the, the sleep first, with, there's so many okay. guys in this world to sleep with one of your friend's little chookies. But it is what it is. Some girls like to share, I don't. Because, honey. <laughs> and niggas are the same way, honey. I, girl, guys, don't tell the fellas about a girl that has some good good. Unless you prepare, prepare for the fellas to get some. And um, I think that that's what went down because there's, there's something that's missing from this story. There's a key thing that's missing from this story. And I think that is one of the key things. I think that someone is protecting someone that has more to lose in this situation. That's what I gather. I can only allude to it, but um, child, it is some tea, it is some tea. Mm. Where is that damn straw at? Damn, I'm looking for a straw, I can never find one. Mm. Oh, here's one. Oh, what a way to get a sat. <laughs> what a way to get a um, to get a Friday started, honey. Messy, messy, messy. I'm not gonna say I feel sorry for the man, but I do feel what he was saying is like basically like there's you know people are already condemning him because of the fact that before they heard his story. Well, honey, nigga. Child, whose fault was that? You had like a month to come out and say something? <laughs> Honey, bitch, you released an album, so shit. Are you happy now? You released a masterpiece. All on the, 
awe on the trauma of a black female. Mm. Mm. This drink hits just right, honey. Y'all know how I get my sober-ish <laughs> um, Friday started. Because I have to have something in my system to deal with these people, honey. Ugh. And dealing with the rat race. 9.32 a.m. <laughs> I'm not having a cocktail, girl. This is just Minute Maid. Minute Maid watermelon. With a little bit of vodka, too. Mmm. <laughs> mm mm People were trying to say me as a man. That's what. Yeah, I mean, they were saying that, but I mean, at this point, it's, it's, it's so tired because of the fact that. Black men like to discredit black females in a lot of ways. And I'm gonna tell you the two main ways that they try to take power away from a black female. They call her crazy, okay? That's number one. Actually, that's number two because the, 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 the biggest insult that you can do to a black female to take her power away or discredit her is call her a man. And who has done this more than a couple of times? The game. He did it to the singer Olivia. He did it to that woman that, that sued him from his reality show. I mean, and he's not the only one. I mean, that's just one of the ways that they tend to discredit the um, black females. At this point, honey, if Meg was, was a transgender, which, honey, it still wouldn't make a difference as far as like, like, because people are gonna say, well, they're gonna call her a man anyways. I mean, so it's, it's like you can't win for losing, honey. It's like you stay quiet and people like, you should say something, bitch. If I got shot, I would have said something. You should say something. You protecting that nigga. Then you say something. Oh, you a snitch. You a snitch, bitch. You up there with Takashi 69, bitch. And that's why I like, why I look at the Tory situation and I say like, honey, he just did what, huh, what any person, he's very smart. He, he, he did what any person in that position would have He took advantage of the moment, even though it's kind of fucked up of like how he took advantage and capitalized and off of these terms. But hey, he, he'll be damned if he do, he'll be damned if he don't, because ciao. Let's switch this up. If this was Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez, hmm. I wonder who they were crucified. I wonder who would ever find out about it. I wonder if they have had some type of like Meg Thee Stallion, Rihanna, Chris Brown tease and just due to the fact that, you know, propaganda and the media likes to portray, you know, urban, urban celebrities a certain way and put them in the highlight of shade while silently, you know, shielding. Let me stop, honey. Hmm. I'm having a cocktail, honey. I'm not drinking my lips and tea. <sighs> well, I would love to kiki with you girls all morning and everything, but the truth of the matter is that you hoes ain't making me no money. And I need to clock in and get a coin because this is Friday. And the first is around the corner. And I know you hoes ain't paying my bills. So, that is what I wanted to say. Um, this, this is why I don't do early morning. Early morning. Um, this is why I don't do early morning lives. Because I can't manipulate the fucking lighting like I want to. You see this? This is not transgender friendly lighting here. All this, this. Now this is trans. This is better transgender friendly lighting, but see, it's just not hitting right.
Okay. Now see this? This is much better transgender friendly lighting. This is the equivalent of perfect transgender friendly lighting in the daytime when you can't get to like other lighting, okay? So I'm gonna, uh, yeah, just wanted to give you guys that. All right, talk to you guys later. Remember, transgender printing lighting, it will save you. But the truth of the matter is, if you think you're cunt and fishy and pussy stunting like you're a female, all the transgender lighting in the world will not save your ass if he feels down Pulls there, down and, there. And, uh -huh. and there's a yeah. bowl. Uh, that part. What? You a nigga? You a nigga? Yeah, yeah, honey. <laughs> a lot of things can be saved, but it will definitely probably not save you from being the next dead transgender woman on the list of transgender day remembrance. Ugh. But having some pepper spray or a piece will definitely save you, honey. <laughs> Keep telling you girls, protection. And as always, like, subscribe, share. Huh, voice. Till next time.